Hello, my name is Jerry Lanz and welcome to the show. I'm here with a very dear friend of mine, Doris Mangru, who is author, speaker, she does it all. And she's here with uh, another new book. And uh, Doris, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, And as Lynn. usual, you look like a million dollar model. Wow, here, I love so. you, thank okay, you. <laughs> so thank you for letting me sit this little, this close to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, you've been doing some very interesting things, and I know that uh, you're interested in something that I think more and more people are finally waking, waking up to the fact that there are a lot of people incarcerated that shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you uh, do, uh, your first book uh, was titled, entitled, would you give us that title? After the Bungee Jump, there's After still the bungee, a lot of jerking going on. After the Bungee Jump, there's still a lot of jerking going on, yes. and we can attest to that. Yes. And that's the story of all the people who are incarcerated, and mainly those who should not be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I've seen in, uh, the onset of people suddenly being aware, you know, there's a lot of people in jail that shouldn't be there, incarcerated. Mm -hmm. So uh, can you tell us a little, bit, a little bit about that book and how you did a documentary and traveled all over, okay. and even to Europe, okay. uh, and tell us what some of your findings were. With the documentary. We're going to go with the documentary yes, first? Yes. Okay. Well, the documentary is called uh, Stains Changing Lives After Incarceration. Okay. In the production of it, uh, we went across country over 10 states in the mm -hmm. making of the film mm -hmm. to look at programs throughout the country that mm -hmm. were either prepared, providing uh, services for the formerly incarcerated mm -hmm. and their families or for one or the other. Mm -hmm. And with that, what we wanted to do was highlight uh, some of the great work that's being done in the country, but to also say to that viewer, mm -hmm. there is so much more to do, mm -hmm. and here's how you can jump in. So we call it a call to action documentary. Mm -hmm. okay. And so it was um, it was made over the summer of t 2009 mm -hmm. and actually premiered at the Tribeca Cinemas in New York in April of 2011. Now, I understand you made, got an award for that, didn't yes, you? Yes, we did. We yeah. got uh, uh, honorable mention for best documentary at the People's Film Festival in New York. Right. Yeah, so that's exciting well, that, as that's well. That's high class <laughs> yes. I was going to ask you what some of your experiences were in some of the cities you traveled in. You were really interesting. Well, you know, the great thing about it, well, not the great thing, but the one thing that is common across this country mm -hmm. is that it's the same problem wherever you go. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have to color your words or change your words for, for New York any differently than you do for Memphis, Tennessee. And so that became something that we knew going in, but it became very apparent as we talked mm -hmm. to folks. Mm -hmm. We talked to a, a program that had been the oldest program for felons. Mm -hmm. You know, felon, a felon coming out, particularly with a drug felon, has a more difficult time yes. uh, in, in being placed in jobs and housing yes. and everything. Everything. And so one of the things that we ring very loudly in the film and my work brings together as well is the family piece yes. and how important it is in everything because no matter mm -hmm. how much you rehabilitate or help an individual, at the end of the day when those programs are over and all of the things that the city, the county, the state, the federal government can or cannot do for a person, at the end of the day if they don't have a family that they're connected with then much of it can be lost in terms of having nowhere to go. So that thread that we found that was common across the country was mm -hmm. that need for family and that resounding piece about, mm -hmm. you know, if my family had not been there mm -hmm. or for those who didn't make it so right. successfully, mm -hmm. that my family was not there, that we'd yes, become right. estranged over the many years of mm -hmm. their being incarcerated. So that was one of the things that became very apparent as well. Well, I think the good way that you projected that was to make the woman the one who went to prison. Mm -hmm. And what happens to the family when the woman is taken out and incarcerated. Well, we, we tied it together with the book, which uh -huh. was the first book, which mm -hmm. is the After the Bungee Jump book. We followed a mother mm -hmm. and her family uh, simultaneously for the eight years of her imprisonment mm -hmm. to take a look at not what only happened uh, to the mother while she's incarcerated, mm -hmm. but also what's happening collaterally to that family mm -hmm. while that person who's gone is, is uh, incarcerated. Mm -hmm. So. What you find with that mother being gone as mm -hmm. opposed to the father, there mm -hmm. is a major collapse in care of the care of the children. Mm -hmm. So in, in the book, that daughter that was left behind, the teenager, the 17-year-old, mm -hmm. put it upon herself mm -hmm. to say, I'm going to keep my family together. Yeah. So she gave up a lot of things. She oh, gave up, you know, amazing. her cheerleading. She mm -hmm. gave up her placement at some of the Ivy League schools that mm -hmm. had scholarships all over the country oh. so that she could keep her family oh, together. Yeah. But at the end of the day, what we're hoping is that that reader would see all of the challenges that not mm -hmm. only mm -hmm. the family has, mm -hmm. but the person who's coming back has, not only while they were gone, mm -hmm. but coming back and reintegrating back into the mm -hmm. community. And so with that, 
we have had a lot of people say, you know what, I never even thought about a prisoner having a family. Yeah, if you haven't been right. directly impacted, yeah. you know, you just say, well, this is somebody who's scum yeah. of the earth. Yeah. They need to be locked up, yeah. throw away the key. And nobody cares about and it. And nobody cares. But, but at the end of care. the day, 95% are coming back home. Mm -hmm. And it's crucial that we not only remember that they're coming back home, but we can at all costs try to keep mm -hmm. those family connected so that mm -hmm. they have somewhere to come back to. So that was the gist of after the bungee jump, to give that reader an opportunity to see what happens on both sides of the bars, to the children, to mm -hmm. the family, mm -hmm. to the person who's been incarcerated. And particularly well. if it's, it's the woman who holds the family together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, mm -hmm. I found that very interesting. And you also took that, uh, uh, some, some interesting information, I guess, along with some cameras, and you went abroad. Mm -hmm. and what did you mm -hmm. discover there? Because that was some surprising information. <laughs> Same problem in Europe as it is The people else. of color yeah. in Europe. Yeah. I, I found that very yeah. interesting. Yeah. They're it the does. ones that... It's the same. It's global. It's global. Uh, the, the thing that the United States stands out with is the number of people that we incarcerate. We have mm -hmm. over two mm -hmm. million people mm -hmm. who are, mm -hmm. you know, behind our jails and prison bars. Mm -hmm. But also we have the community uh, mm -hmm. supervision, you know, probation, mm -hmm. parole, mm -hmm. uh, transitional housing, yeah. where people are wearing the ankle bracelet. So there, there are multiple millions of people That's who right. are, are impacted right. by incarceration. So with that, each of those individuals, in most cases, is connected mm -hmm. to three to five people. Mm -hmm. So the numbers are just larger and larger okay. and larger, and the communities yeah. are yeah. falling apart and crumbling as That's a result right. of it. So And what's happening, we're finding out that the, the color has that problem all over the world. Mm -hmm. Because now you have mm -hmm. the uh, people of color going abroad. Uh, the riots are starting in Paris and mm -hmm. you know different mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. So there still is racism all over. It's not just in, in the United States. No. And that's something that, that we should... Uh, do something about and talk about sometime because mm -hmm. we're already talking about race in the United States. But guess what? It's all over the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> uh, the thing I think now, the beautiful thing that you did is that you went from that book and that experience. Uh, you didn't stop there. You went to your next book. Now, mm -hmm. tell me what, how you decided to title of it is, what it's about, and how you came to the conclusion you should talk about that subject. Okay. Okay? Well, it's entitled A, a Soiled Identity, uh -huh. From Triumph to Tragedy and Back Again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I title my books, I always like them to, to tell the story yeah. in the title. Mm -hmm. And so this is a story about a Marine mm -hmm. who served for 15 years, mm -hmm. decorated, mm -hmm. uh, comes back home after a couple of tours in Iraq and one in Afghanistan that occur in a six-year period for over, you know, back-to-back-to-back mm -hmm. -back -back yes. deployments. Mm -hmm. And so he comes back to, you know, the triumphant return, every mm -hmm. welcome home to our hero, mm -hmm. but he's suffering with PTSD. Right. One to five, one out of five of people who are returning, 20% right. of those who are coming back uh, from Iraq and Afghanistan are dealing with PTSD. But because the military has this, you know, culture of strength mm -hmm. and power mm -hmm. and, and bravery, mm -hmm. he doesn't want to ex accept that he really is dealing with a problem that's really large. So he tries to mask it. He doesn't have any anger problems. He doesn't have any issues that are external that you can tell. But and he, he has no injuries to his body. He doesn't have any injuries. See, that's that. where we get fooled. Yeah. And so with that, he's able to mask. Uh -huh. He masks by using uh, prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. But in using the prescription drugs, you know, just like anything, when you're using it to mask something, you begin to need more and more and more of it until it turns into abuse. So how he handles this uh -huh. is he begins to sell illicit drugs because he doesn't want to go to the Naval Medical Corps. Yeah, and reveal the all these right. shortcomings. So. so I'll get involved with selling drugs to feed my prescription drugs. So he becomes a drug dealer. He becomes a drug dealer. That sounds like Breaking Bad. <laughs> Breaking Bad was about this teacher that turned to the uh, underworld selling drugs. But, uh, and we don't, we don't realize what these, uh, uh, what do we call them, these incidents that happen when the soldier comes home and he doesn't even, I've heard soldiers say, I, didn't, I don't even fit w anymore in my mm -hmm, family. Mm -hmm. I don't fit in this city. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't feel that I've, I can come back. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them rejoin. Mm -hmm. And that's a kind of a tragedy because that's when they really get hurt. Well, you know, one of the reasons I chose to do this is because my work has been around working with families and people who are dealing with separation, mm -hmm. incarceration, mm -hmm. deployment, study abroad, doesn't matter. 
if a person is separated from their life, from their environment for long periods of mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. there's going to be a disconnect that occurs. Mm -hmm. So when that person tries to come back, there's going to be some reintegration okay. challenges. That's right. And so when this person, in the case of this particular mm -hmm. book, The Soiled mm -hmm. Identity, mm -hmm. this person has all of the trauma of the things that they've seen in the theater of war. Mm -hmm. And so now beginning to mask it and do all the things that they do, they find him, he finds himself in prison for six years. Oh. So now we go from there. What happens to this man in prison? Does he, uh, does he rehabilitate at all, or what happens? Well, it wasn't so much a need for rehabilitation as mm -hmm. it was a time for him to think. Mm -hmm. Because he knew, he knew, mm -hmm. he was well aware of what he was doing. He yes. was well aware that it could possibly get him in trouble. So he goes there, and then prison becomes the best teacher. Ah. Prison becomes his teacher of knowing that, you know what, I'm never going to do this again. Yeah. If I get yeah. out, I promise. I have a consequence. I will play. never do it again. And so with that, he comes back, and mm -hmm. this is from the triumph. The triumph is mm -hmm. coming from Afghanistan, coming to, you know, jubilation. Everyone's mm -hmm. welcoming mm -hmm. him back mm -hmm. into society to the tragedy mm -hmm. of going into prison. Mm. But while he's in that tragic moment, those six years, mm. separated from his family, mm. not being able to see his daughters, mm -hmm. having problems, you know, communicating with mm. family, he has time to think and learns so much about knowing the importance of freedom and how it feels fresh on our faces mm -hmm. when, mm -hmm. we, when we take that breath, that next breath, mm -hmm. and it's a free breath, the difference in the way it feels when you're incarcerated. So mm. he comes now from that tragedy, now he comes back into his family. Mm. That is... So it, it's a successful story then. It is a successful that story. That is a beautiful. It is a successful story. But now, while he comes back from the tragic moment of coming back, it's filled with all types of twists. You don't want to give I, everything no, away. No, no, you don't want to give it all <laughs> I away. I want you to purchase the book. But, but you it, know, I hope that sounds like a great movie. And so, well, Ooh, well let's I hope really so. That would be that movie. Would be that's not a documentary. <laughs> that's a movie. I'm so, hoping that it will be. So far, yeah, you know, it just hit a couple of, not too long ago. It's brand new, of course. Yeah. And so. Uh, but hey, you need to send it to some of the producers. I've gotten See, some they, great yeah. reviews. Yeah. Uh, what you it. need to do is it's hard to reach the, like a, a Clint Eastwood, which is not, not hard to reach his uh, agent. Mm -hmm. So you call up uh, down, you know, Hollywood and you get his agent and you send him the book. Okay. I mean, uh, <laughs> some of the secrets I get from my son, Ted, <laughs> call the agent, mom. Okay. Uh, but you know, uh, let me tell you something about prison. Well, you know, Nelson, it made Nelson Mandela, of mm -hmm, course, mm -hmm. and it's made this young man. Mm -hmm. There's something about cutting out the world and getting in, being, learning how to stay in a cubicle. And I'll tell you why. Uh, you know, I've traveled to four continents, and Italy's one of my favorite places. And I went to uh, what we call uh, Florence. They called it Firenze, mm -hmm. you know, the Italians. It's Firenze. So, and my host was a Catholic priest, okay. and wonderful guy, Father Formai. And he took me up to the place, it was so cute, he took me up to the mountains of Firenze, where all the artists were, this where they painted and everything. And he took me to a place, and I take you to get some, uh, I'm gonna take you to get some medicine. This is where we get all of our medicine. We went to a farm, it looked supposed to be a pharmacy for medicine. Well, of course, it was some of the best brandy I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, this will cure anything, you know. But one of the pl other places uh, that he took me was where one of the saints lived mm -hmm. before they died. They had been in an old age and whatever, but he lived uh, uh, and did these wonderful acts. Mm -hmm. And we visited the room. We went into a building or something where he stayed. And uh, guess what it was? It was about the same size as a cell. They had a thing where it opened up in the door you were not allowed to go in and have contact. And you fed him by putting a tray through the door. Mm -hmm. And I, said, I told him, I said, well, this is, this is a cell. Mm -hmm. He said, exactly. It's built just like a, a, a prison cell. Now, the difference was, he said, but he's got a window mm -hmm. on the backside. And he said, let's go in and show you what this priest was able to see every day. And we went out, we went into the cubicle, it was very small, but there was a window there, and he could look out onto one of the most beautiful gardens he had ever seen. Uh, the green and the beautiful colors, and they kept it that way. So I thought, what a lesson to learn, that sometimes we, all, we really all have to go into solitude. Because I know uh, 
what Mandela went through in that little room. And that member of that soccer team guy said, I got to go to this room and find out what happened to this guy, you know, but uh, this is what you're talking about in your well, book. Well, you know, it's so ironic that you mentioned Nelson Mandela because uh -huh. my character mentions uh -huh. Nelson Mandela and, and just some of what you it's just some, shared. Yes about how that changed everything for him yes. and, and gave him, while, while incarcerated, this mm -hmm. opportunity to, to see it not as a punishment, mm -hmm. but to see it as something that's now going to propel him to change the rest of his life. And for all the things that he has that are happening to him as he returns home, because mm -hmm. he goes mm -hmm. through some really challenging things that happen to his family, mm -hmm. but his mindset mm -hmm. is one of success. His yes. mindset is, I'm going to make this work no matter what. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the book, the reader can look at maybe their own life, whether they've been of incarcerated course. or not, and go like, wow, there's an indomitable spirit that says, I'm not going to give up no mm -hmm. matter what. That's right. I can be successful no matter what. At the end of all of these challenges mm -hmm. is my victory. Mm -hmm. At the end of all of the things that I've been through, the bumps in the road, those things that didn't go well, this and that and that and that yeah, that exactly, happened, exactly. I can still come back again. So from triumph That's right. to tragedy and back again, my identity has been soiled. Uh, yes. I came back, you know, I'm the great, you know, decorated Marine. That's right. I now have stumbled down and, and tumbled into a life where I find myself in prison. But no matter what, I come back and I get people who are not looking at me, who look at me with disdain, don't want to yeah, be bothered, right. to turn around that's right. because of all the things that unfold in my life yeah. as I return to my back again. So from yeah. triumph to tragedy. So I, 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 now did he triumph in the end in this book? Oh, absolutely. Oh. Oh, absolutely. I mean, through all of the struggle, all it, the wasn't, struggle. it wasn't easy. It was not yeah. easy, but at the end of the day, mm -hmm. he looked back and went, you know, I, I made it. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think mm -hmm. it's just, it's one of those stories, and, and matter of fact, some of the, re, the responses mm -hmm. that I've gotten back so mm -hmm. far is that mm -hmm. I looked at my stuff and said, if he can go through all of that and still rise, my stuff is not. Well, that's what's good yeah. about it. That, yes. that's, just, that's what's very good about writing these kinds of books. It's never too late. For instance, what we have never understood are the consequences of just being alive in this world. Mm -hmm. We get thrown off by, oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Exactly. Don't you realize the original prison is our bodies? Mm -hmm. We cannot leave these bodies. Mm -hmm. And we get pretty, well, I don't like, I'm getting all these wrinkles, I'm getting old and I don't like the way I look. Or when you're young, you just feel in prison, I wanna go climb the mountaintop and I'm not old enough to go or I'm, I'm too young to do this. We are imprisoned in our body. Mm -hmm. It's our mind that sets us free. Mm -hmm. And so that's what Mandela had to use in that cubicle. He had to first free himself from his body and become who he, re he really is connected to the universe. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us need that lesson. Don't oh, you think so? Oh, absolutely. Because it would keep you from uh, being so upset when some little thing happens or not recognizing you that if you get sick, you can get well. And maybe you made yourself sick by what you thought. <laughs> and, and, you, and, and so you're feeding off of your body all the time. Don't you know people that do that? Oh, absolutely. They're always angry. Yes. You can never make them yes. happy. And so there's some people that you can't, uh, that are always consequently, somebody said, why are you always so happy? Mm -hmm. And you say, well, gee, if I could think about it, it's just, <laughs> a, it should be a state of being. And I've noticed that those people never get sick. Well, you know, you talk about the, uh, the body prison. In the book, it talks about the man-made prison, the mind-made prison. Exactly. Uh, Multi-storied, you know, a lot of, you know, our, our inability to forgive. That's you know, right. we say, because I'm not going to forget. Well, what forgiveness does, it doesn't mean mm. you forget. It means no. you give yourself a new path of looking at it a different way, remembering it in a different way. That's right. Because you're the only one that's being held back that's right. by your lack of being, uh, your lack right. of forgiveness. So right. uh, there, it touches on so many things in life. I, I like to say that while it's called and we're looking at this one person's life, mm -hmm. if you will, and following the twists and turns mm -hmm. of the things that are happening mm -hmm. with he and his family, mm -hmm. it's a life story for anyone you know, for anyone to look at their stuff, what they're going through, what they're experiencing. And, and what I did in terms of coming from the family book mm -hmm. with the bungee jump now mm -hmm. to the soil identity mm -hmm. is calling attention to the similarities between what goes on with a, a person coming back from, from war as a person coming back from incarceration. Absolutely. It's the tale of two transitions. Right. One of the person comes back triumphantly mm -hmm. and another of the person comes back really not so well received, yes. but in but either they're both case, in trouble. both are in trouble. trouble. Because for different they, reasons. Yeah, the family has to get used again yes, to that right. person. They have to get used again to the person that's coming yes. back in both cases. In both and cases. in this particular case, because he's coming back with the PTSD, that's right. the nightmares, the, the insomnia, the, the, you know, the survivor's guilt, 
He's in a world that's separate from the world that his family's mm -hmm. in. So he still has to reconnect. And when he's coming back from that prison environment, mm -hmm. he again has to reconnect with people who don't want to be bothered. That's right. So it's, 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 it's tricky it, in both transitions. And you know, I think a lot about the wives, they're kind of the unsung heroes here mm -hmm. because they have a big burden. They have to receive this man back mm -hmm. and have them make love to them. Mm -hmm. And we don't even know how his attitude has changed that. Mm -hmm. and then the imp impact on the children because she doesn't want them to know the father has changed. Mm -hmm. and there's so much going on. The metaphors, and, and like I'm saying, uh, I, I'm doing something for an, a piece on an anthology, and what I'm saying is, you know, unless you can see in the face of the person walking to you, coming your way, if you can't see your face in that face, you're not connected to the universe. Mm -hmm. You're not really to the mm -hmm. source because the source is, there's just, we're just a, a little bit of skin away from being that person. Mm -hmm. And we all are dealing with s different things. Absolutely. But like I said, there are people who are afraid to walk out of their house. You know why? Because they read the newspapers and they tell them, my God, I don't know if I could be shot well, down, I'm run over. across the street. Yeah, I mean, I'm scared to go out and they're scared to go out based on what they think. And the other thing is, if they go out, they don't know who's going to assault them verbally or whatever else. But look what would help them if they recognize the true fact that you and I think both know. They're afraid to go out because of what's going to happen to them, having to deal with another person they don't know or do know or the person that they know may say something hurtful. Mm -hmm. They're afraid of all this stuff that may not ever happen. But what about if they recognize the fact that to forgive that's the hard thing. Suppose you knew that you could walk out of your house and no matter what happened to you, that the only thing that you're held accountable for is how you respond. Absolutely. And it's just a click like that. If you just change that attitude, and that's why I say, and they ask about aging. Oh, well, how come you stay young all the time and you're aging? Because I'm not thinking about that. I always am in charge of my life. If you can conceive that you're all, nobody out in the street is in charge of your life. The guy that's running you down with that automobile, he isn't in charge of your life either because it's how you decide to recover. How you decide to And deal so with it. I'm yeah. saying that it all goes back in the end that you, as the man said in the poem, I am the master of my ship. I am the master of my fate. You know, it goes back to me. All of my companies are called Sadiana, which means to help each other. Exactly. And so recognizing that no matter where this person stayed in his life, they have as much reason as another to breathe on the planet. Right. And whether I see them as my equal or not, exactly. if I recognize them as human being, it doesn't mean that I have to like them or approve of their actions. Mm -hmm. But when I recognize them as human mm -hmm. beings, I'm going to mm -hmm. get to that place that you were talking about. Yeah. I'm going to see myself in them because right. they deserve to be treated exactly. well. Exactly. Regardless of their state of mind. That's right. And I, I was going to ask you about the origin of Sadiana. Would you give me Sadiana that? Sadiana is a Swahili word that means to help each other. Oh, God. And so in, in, in naming my work, I wanted to, to embody what I do. Yes. And uh, the importance of us recognizing the helping mm -hmm. each other, that mm -hmm. we rise when mm -hmm. we help others rise. When we try to keep everybody down because we want to be the big it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. eventually that's going to crumble. Mm -hmm. But when we do things together, we trust each other. Mm -hmm. My motto is together we can do anything but fail. We can, exactly. Yes. And, and my thing about you, the, these kinds of books, even though your intent is for that conclusion, that book helps people to deal with the, uh, their own problems in life, mm -hmm. which are not nearly as heavy as no. these. <laughs> and, exactly. and, and, and the point being that, you see, I grew up with an Indian, I, I, didn't know, I never knew my Indian grandmother, but my father gave me many of the teachings. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and my, one woman described me, she says, well, you're an African-American uh, woman who's mm -hmm. really uh, an Indian woman, you know, because of the way I've, I think. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, because I've never held anybody accountable for me. There's nobody accountable for me. It's my attitude toward my captor. If they decided they wanted to take a bunch of people from Africa over here in change, they're going to have to answer for that. I'm not answering for that. The only thing I can answer for is how I respond to the man that's put me in chains. And that's what ages people or makes them sick. And if we can only take books like yours and do a translation on it, to how your book helps people get well, I think that would be a perfect extension and appendix to all the books we write. <laughs> See, now let's talk about sickness, because America is one sick country. Yes. Everybody's sick. 
Everybody's taking pills, and they don't have to do that. All they have to do is change their attitude. Your attitude is what makes you sick. It's what ages you. It ma it's what makes you uh, become, I don't want to say ugly instead mm -hmm. of beautiful, but mm -hmm. it is. It, it gives a look to your face that you say, I don't think I want to cross this person. I don't think I'm going to not speak to because this person is going to hit me if I speak. You know, Now, that's a terrible thing to say, but you know you've seen people down there, they dare you to speak to them. Mm -hmm. And the other people opening, how do you do this morning? Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And uh, uh, I how you a little thing that changed my life. When you get a certain age, and I'll give you a hint, and it happens, nobody th thinks about it. And uh, I have a friend, Arif Khatib, who's wonderful in there, because I was telling him the story. He finished it for me. I said, you know, a certain thing happens after a while when you get it's a, certain, a lady of a certain age or a person of a certain age. And he said, I said, I was walking down the street one day. He said, and you changed your rhythm. I said, how do you know that? <laughs> he said, because I changed mine. Mm -hmm. He says, you're walking down the street, and one day you're not walking like a, t you know, fast, you know, I, I had a New York walk that I passed, actually came back to California and said, where are you going? I said, well, this is my New York walk. Well, I kept that New York walk, which was great for exercise. But this one day, I walked out of the house and I just, I couldn't help it. I had a pace that mm -hmm. I couldn't change. I said, Jesus, I feel like I'm strutting. I feel really good. And I walked down the same street I walk down every day when I leave my house. Do you know I saw people who had been out on their porches, probably they were out on their porches, many, I was too busy walking, getting to my destination, never looked. But now I stopped, and I was walking slow enough to say, oh, there's somebody sitting on the porch up there, and I think I'll speak today. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to them, and they said, yeah, how do you do, sister? I see been you walking you every morning, you know, <laughs> and you haven't had time to talk. And I found out I changed my whole day mm -hmm. by changing the rhythm of my step. Now that is about as simplistic as you can get. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, that's what growing and aging should be about, that you learn the lessons of survival. Well, you know, for me, I, I call it my reinvention. Yeah, uh, yeah. When, I, when I took a, a step back and go, you know, mm -hmm. I'm moving on in the world and, and I, I want to move the way I want to move that's in the world right. as opposed to, you know, the way this employer or that employer yeah, wants me right, to move. Right. So with that came the Sadiana work. Oh, with that right. came the writing. With that came the training. With that's that right. came the speaking. With that came the film. And all of the things that have been done within the last five years because I now want to pace myself differently. Exactly. Right. I want to touch the lives just as you just right. talked about. I want to give back. I want to leave mm -hmm. my legacy. Mm -hmm. I want to leave my legacy. That's right. Not the legacy that I that someone else has created right. for me to support, but my legacy. And and look at the wonder of it all when you change the energy, the energy you save. Yes. Because God yes. wants you to live a long time. So true. And I believe it or not, that this half hour is gone already. Wow. And mm -hmm. I think we covered a lot more territory than we thought we were going to <laughs> see. But it's always a pleasure to talk with you, Doris. Thank you and so good much. luck on that book. Because I like the fact that that book, along with your other book, documentaries, you, we can change lives by what we write. Yes. yes. And, I'm, and I think God has blessed us so much. Well, I hope that everyone will want to get a copy of it. And my uh, website is www.dorisimangrum.com. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. book can be purchased at mm -hmm. w there at place slash back backslash products, www.dorisimangrum.com mm -hmm. backslash products. Right, and I bet he's put that on that screen right away. I hope so. Okay, <laughs> thank you for joining us, and we hope that you take something of this to your heart. I'm Jerry Lynn. Thank you.